you know, relationships like these are important. And we value that. You've heard me say several times. Uh, one, that um, we can't do what we do without relationships. And at the same time, we value the relationship we have with you personally and, and, and with the chamber. So um, appreciate you coming in this morning and kind of sitting down and chatting with us a little bit, sharing a little beverage. It's nice to actually get to see you guys. Like in actually person, right? see you. Yeah. yeah. In person, not behind the <laughs> yeah. screen with some funny background. And th- yeah, I got yep. it. I understand. I yep. understand. I mean, this has really changed this pandemic, this entire um epidemic if you want to call it that has really changed the way we do things it's changed the way how we respond to things um so yeah we're all still getting used to it it's been about two months almost three months now but still takes some getting used to because you have to you don't realize until you're not doing it how much you value face to face yeah how much you you miss the interaction with people um and that's a big thing for us and how we do things but you know the, the the business is still happening um you know we went from a, i think we're, we're, we're leaning at a point now to going to a uh, a, a forward virginia so a phased opening approach and we've had a phase a phased approach as we go through this you know i think we went from a, a response phase um to a recovery phase and then i think once we get out of that recovery phase we're going to end up really in this kind of resiliency phase because we're going to have to be resilient and make sure that if this ever happens again and it very well may may be something that comes up and just disrupts business as we know it gotta we we gotta be resilient and and have a plan on how we respond and and go back through that cycle so um it's all going to be in phases but um just just where we are as an office is, is 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 tremendous i mean you'll hear me say it all the time we have the best staff um, <laughs> I in, do in, hear that in, in yep. Hampton Roads. Yeah, I like just it. want to say that. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we have myself, Mr. Donahue. Certainly, you spoke with Jessica, yep. uh, Armand Smith. Uh, lucky to have him. And then the cornerstone of this office is certainly Lee. And yep. um, I don't know what I'd do without Lee, uh, both personally and professionally. She's just um, been the rock to keep us together, keep us on time, keep us focused on where we need to be. Um, you know, but so tell us, I mean, how are things with you from a chamber standpoint? Like, how are you guys handling this? Thing? Well, we're you you laid it out really well from the standpoint of kind of the three phases as far as the, the first phase. We were essentially reacting to it. Um, and now we are also in that recovery phase um, and, and really trying to I say we I. We only from the standpoint of what we're trying to do <clears throat> as a regional partner, regional collaborator um, to help the, the business community. And I think what's been great about it, and we kind of opened with this, and I think um, it, it's incredibly value, is the collaboration that we're seeing at a regional level that, that for somebody who has spent the last probably 30 years back in the Hampton Roads community and, and working in the business community, I have never seen this kind of collaboration ever. Um, and it's, it's been, it's been absolutely wonderful to see. Um, it's something that we've kind of given lip service to for, for a couple of decades. We've all said we needed to do it. We've all talked about it, but, but the way the business community has come together to respond to this, I, I think has been absolutely amazing. Um, and um, the fact that, that not just on the economic development side, not just on the chamber side, um, but you're even seeing where chambers and economic development teams and, and city departments are all coming together. They're all talking with one another. They're all finding uh, ways to, to create portals for these resources. Um, Jim Carroll and his team with with SBDC. Certainly, um, certainly. That man has been uh, he's he's going up for sainthood when this is all done because <laughs> he he knowledge. from day right. one knowledge. he was taking he's been on top of like yes. water from a, a fire hose yes. that man was doing and and continues to be a, a, an absolutely incredible voice for the small business community. Um, so I think when, when seeing everything pulled together like that and seeing us now transitioning into that recovery phase has, has been wonderful to see. Um, 
and and it just it makes you never like any other crisis or or uh, environment like this where there's an awful lot of of bad there's an awful lot of uh, disappointment this is part of that that you see come out of it where it there's there's the positives that have developed because of what we as a community have been able to come together and do um, and regardless of what restrictions may or may not be in place at any given time, I think we as a community have, have done a great job of figuring out how to work with those restrictions to best serve our business community um, and, and help them pivot. Um, Brian has used it a lot lately is trying to find the ways to pivot to the positive is, is how can we help businesses find unique ways to pivot, whether it's the, the obvious things like the delivery and the pickup service, but also uh, businesses that have tried to completely transition their, their companies um, so that they're able to serve the community in multiple ways now and, and be able to keep people employed, um, keep the doors open, um, and still stay within those restrictions that have been set for them. So it's that part of it I see as a, as a major positive, but while still recognizing the fact that it would be less than respectful not to also remember that there are still a lot of those businesses that are struggling. Sorry. And those are the ones we need to continue to, to reach out to and, and, and offer our help and offer whatever we can to, to help them get through the rest of this. Um, so it's that, that collaboration during this recovery has, has been awesome to see. And, and I thank you guys for being a part of that to, along with everybody else. You're welcome. No problem. I mean, it's, it's a balancing act. Um, you know, a, Brian, you correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, we've, we've had a number of, of um, outreach opportunities that we've taken advantage of. But at the same time, we've, we've got some new things going on. We've got new um, uh, industries that we have popping up. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, we, we, we are still strong in a lot of areas. And a lot of that has to do with uh, what I consider a, a, a diverse but um, somewhat steady and stable um, area in, in, from the form of the port. Uh, military, shipyards. I mean, that's what's happening right now. I mean, I, I would think you'd agree. Yeah, I would agree. I think, you know, we often say that Hampton Roads doesn't have a diverse economy, but I think right now we're realizing that we actually, we do. Um, while our hospitality and retail and uh, restaurants have been really hit hard, I think we're realizing that we do have some other areas uh, that are strong um, and that we're benefiting from that strength right now uh, with respect to the you know, defense industry being Located heavily here in Hampton Roads, but also the port uh, to Roberts Point. So, you know, warehousing, uh, distribution, logistics are uh, very strong right now, of course, with e-commerce and um, the activity there that's uh, occurred as a result of COVID. But um, we have a diverse economy. I think we need to continue looking to expand upon that. We are. Um, but we've got some sectors that are doing pretty well right now. So it's it's a balancing act. You know, we, we've really focused on our uh, business retention and assistance efforts over the last few months, uh, trying to maintain um, an understanding of where our small business community is, and um, at the same time trying to maintain the growth that we've experienced here in Portsmouth um, over the last two or three years, um, which has really begun to take off. Um, we're now looking to maintain that going forward, and um, I think we're, you know, we're, um, I don't want to say in a good place, but we're, we're working through the times. And I think we've got some good things that are coming. So uh, we'll talk about that Have you seen more. on the development side, whether it's if it's in infrastructure or physical buildings, um, I've talked to several people that have said that on the one hand, while the, the uh, consumer business has obviously slowed, this has actually been a pretty good time for a lot of development because of the fact that you're not shutting down roads that otherwise may be in the middle of rush hour or uh, shutting down areas within the community that otherwise need to have regular access. Are you finding that from that standpoint, some of these projects are, are able to kind of almost get ahead of schedule rather than, than being just being on schedule or even behind schedule? Yeah, I think projects that were behind schedule uh, are now on schedule, which 
in Hampton Roads means ahead of schedule. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, I, it, you're looking at the 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 different road projects we have throughout the region. Uh, you look at just where we are from various projects, like you said, that can continue to move forward and not have to worry about shutting down things of that nature. But at the same time, the redevelopment aspect, people are really taking an opportunity from a, from the development side to look at what really and truly now is the highest and best use of my piece of property, yeah. of my building, so forth. Yeah. And that's a trickle down effect because then you have the, the, the business owners that are saying, what is the best way now for me to continue to um, uh, uh, make money, be available, uh, and 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 give the services and goods, you know, provide those goods and services that I um, that I normally do. Uh, it, it's making everybody kind of just reevaluate their processes, everything from permitting to uh, how we run our board meetings, when we run our board meetings, um, and and just how we conduct business. That's just not. That's not going to go back to the way it was. And yeah. and and and. and I mean, being candid is is just not, um, and it probably shouldn't. Um, you know, I'll, I I want to speak for, for for Brian, but I think I work harder now than I did. You know, working from work harder working from home than coming in the office five days a week because you don't you forget sometimes that you have that we you might have five meetings in a day, and one might be. City Hall, one might be with a business in church, and one might be with a business at the port. One might be, but there's some downtime in between because you got to drive between each one of them, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Now yeah. it's okay. I was on this call, I might be able to debrief a little bit, maybe hit the restroom, throw a donut in my mouth, and now I'm on another call. Yep. Um, that, that can take its toll because you, you got to be able to take that time to relax, uh, and then you still have life outside of work. So it, it, it again, it, it's caused us all, I think, to reassess how we do things. Yeah. Um, but from a business standpoint, you know, you hear people say all the time, it, it takes a village. Uh, you know, we talk about children and we talk about them a lot here, but um, it takes a village. For us to get this economy back, it's going to take a region. Um, yeah, we've, we've transitioned a little bit to that. I think uh, as a chamber, I mean, we... Kind of to your point, we've had to really kind of uh, refocus a little bit as well. Um, there's, there's, we always, there's always kind of this mantra in, in the chamber world that are you, are you a chamber that happens to do events or are you an events program that, ha that happens to be a chamber? Um, and um, so it's one of those balancing acts where, I mean, the reality is, like in our case, what Priscilla and Ann do with our events and programs team is absolutely vital to our viability as, a, as an organization. I mean, the, the reality is that's, it's how we pay the bills. It's how we communicate with our membership. It's how we, to your point, how we physically bring together the leaders of our community, whether that's the executives, whether that's the elected officials, whether that's the, the executives within the cities themselves that we partner with, um, those events are absolutely vital to, to what we do, but also trying to balance that with our, our, our mission and our message, which is to be um, an advocate for the business community um, and to, to do the things that, that Ira Agricola and, and Emily Hasty are, are able to do for us in the General Assembly. And when I say us, I don't even really mean the chamber because we're not really doing it for us. We're doing it for the business community. Right, we're doing right. it for the economic development departments. Right. We're doing it for the, the cities themselves. Um, so that's that's something that it's been interesting to look at that because with this transition and in a time when Priscilla and Ann really don't have a choice. I mean, they've had to make, take and push their events back into the fall schedule at the earliest. Right. Um, we've, we've then had to kind of look at what, what we're doing and say, okay, now we have to be even a bigger voice right now because we don't have those events with which to draw people in and tell that story. Um, we have to find these different avenues to go out and 
and convey what we're doing to the community to to help people know that they can come to us as a resource. Um, so I think, again, uh, for all the, the disappointment, that those are the type of pivots, to your point, that really force you to look at what you're doing and say, okay, what could we be doing better? And then when the time comes that we're lucky enough to be able to be back in the same room together and, and have these events and to be able to uh, physically bring us into to spaces, that what parts of what we learned during COVID are we going to then carry over into what will be a new structure, no matter how we want to look at it. Yeah. We're like you said, we're not going back to the way we were six months ago. Yeah. It can't happen. No. I mean, you, you look at, at, at where we were as a locality uh, several years ago, where we are now. I think that, and again, I'm gonna speak for myself. I'm gonna speak for my colleague. I think I, I think we can safely say the collaboration piece, from the standpoint of the businesses, in in our office, has grown tremendously. Um, would you? Without a doubt. Okay. I think we probably had more uh, peer-to-peer contacts yeah. with our small business community over the last two months, and probably the last two years, and not for lack of trying. It's yeah. just um, I think they've realized, you know, they. They need us just as much as we need them. That's right. Um, that's right. And as practitioners, I mean, that's why we're here as economic developers. Uh, that's what we do. So um, it's definitely been a uh, collaborative effort, um, I think, uh, locally, regionally, and beyond even our partners at the state level. Uh, we've really engaged uh, throughout um, some of our organizations and contacts to really get a feel for what others are doing in other communities, trying to bring those um home those ideas of uh, how we can you know be of assistance and what resources we can bring so it's definitely been a, a collaborative effort that's all part of the you know that relationship that we always strive to deliver um, but uh, I think now we've we've probably um, been more in touch and in tune with our business community than um, you know the past and um, I'm hoping that's going to continue I think we're going to work to make sure that continues on our end um, coming out of this. Yeah. So it'll be a different way that we do it. Yeah, Probably more done. phone calls and yeah. uh, virtual meetings as opposed to uh, lunches and uh, meetings at the conference table. But right. um, yeah, we're, we're hoping it continues. I think it's a good, one of the good things that has come out of this. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I mean, I think the chamber, we're like 91% of our members are small business. Um, but, but kind of to your point with a lot of times the attention, I mean, when, when you all put an announcement out, if it's a big brand, if it's Wawa, everybody knows it's Wawa. I mean, right, right, <laughs> and I mean, you right. got people cheering from the mountaintops because right. Wawa's coming exciting, close, right. close right. enough to their house that That's they right. get to get the coffee That's on the right. way out yeah. the door. They're That's not right. routing five miles right. over. So, but, but the reality is, I mean, like I said, like 91% of, I don't know what your percentages are in Portsmouth, but, but the chambers, 91% small business. Now, we all know kind of depending on how you want to figure out the, the numbers, employees versus revenue. But the reality is a large majority of our membership is small business um, and something that, w- that we have always had to balance um, is, is kind of that idea that, I mean, like when you go to the signature events, we have a lot of our bigger sponsors. And, and, and the reality is our, our core businesses in the community uh, are, are a big part of why we're able to do what we do, whether it's me as a chamber, whether it's you as an economic development uh, department, whether it's the city from a tax base standpoint. Um, there's so much that we, we have to have large businesses, um, if possible, sometimes international and national businesses that, that, that help us sometimes just to pay the bills. Right. But the reality is the backbone of who we are as communities is that small business, and and you're absolutely right in that, it, the 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 attention that for the most part is not always focused on the small business community. I haven't seen, I haven't seen this much exposure, this much press, this much attention given to the small business community in the thirty some years I've been in the business world. Uh, I have never, and I think it's awesome. I think the fact that we are celebrating. Our small businesses, our entrepreneurs, especially in the Hampton Roads community, where where we have been talking for years about retaining talent, 
cre creating from within uh, our incubators, our, our shared spaces, our, our entrepreneurial programs at our four-year universities, whether it's Norfolk State or ODU, th that attention, I think, is, is, is the value to that. We could have tried to budget for something like that and market for something like that right. until we all were retired and, right. and gone. And never be able to match what we're able to convey now for the small business community. I think the key for us is we can't lose sight of that when things get start to get back to normal. That that we're able to take that momentum for the small business community, help them get back on their feet, and then carry that through so that that momentum just creates a, a, a catalyst to create even more small businesses to to, to get more inventive ideas into the market and hopefully retain a lot of that talent. Right. Because we're now seen as that, that, that space for people to land. I, I saw something yesterday was talking about healthcare and the fact that, and I forget where I saw it. So forgive me for not being able to reference it, but it was talking about the fact that we have such a strong healthcare uh, system in this community. Um, and that one of the reasons we've been able to manage COVID so well is because we have so much strong healthcare in the Hampton Roads community. And for that reason, one of the things that was brought up was the idea of being able to utilize that to retain the, the talent, both the talent in that industry, but also the talent that knows that they can come into this community and have good healthcare um, and be able to open a business, be able to start a business or continue a business and prosper, um, knowing that we're in a much better situation than a lot of communities. I mean, especially, for instance, just in the state of Virginia. I mean, for an area that's more, well, we have, what, two of the most populous cities in the entire state. And yet we're not dealing nearly with the issues that they're dealing with in some of the other sectors of the state. So that's a huge positive for us. So, um so yeah, I, I think from from the small business standpoint, I mean, I, I'm I'm really actually excited to see what we see moving forward and how we can we can carry this momentum. We just got to get them all back on their feet first. So. It, it's going to come down to, like you stated earlier, it's going to come down to the messaging mm -hmm. to make sure that we now incorporate this resiliency that we've had over the last three months and we'll continue to have i i believe uh over the next you know throughout the end of the year till we get a vaccine we're, we're going to remain those sectors that are strong um have, have become even stronger as you talked about before but we've got to add that resiliency message to our messaging and to our branding uh you know it, there's nothing like branding yourself properly uh, that's one of the reasons we are where we are as an office. If it wasn't for uh, Jessica and, and and her ideas and 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 helping us take the vision and and going to you know letting people know that this is a smart move and the smart move for business, yeah, probably wouldn't be here. We wouldn't have the same attitude. Yeah. So sometimes you got to go through things, you got to evaluate, got to change, and and then um and adapt and see where you are, um and. We're at a point now where you, you got to ask yourself two questions. Uh, uh, could I and should I? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's where you are as a business. That's where we are as an organization. Yeah. Could we do it and should we do it? Yeah. Um, because those decisions, just those simple decisions, have long-term effects. Uh, and, and, and for us, I mean, I believe we've done a lot in this region to answer those questions correctly. Uh, when you look at uh, HREDA. And, and, and their new leadership and, and, and board and and how we interact and, and, and work together. Um, that's a big deal. That's that that's that's, that's big doings. Yeah. Um, you know, again, the outreach between the different groups. Uh, again, we talk about Portsmouth because that's where we are. But yeah. when you look at the collaboration across the region between the chambers, like you said, HREDA, the state, um, I mean, you you can't help but see it. Um, I'm hoping at the end of the day, along with the messaging, that we also keep that though. I want to keep the, the the collaboration. I want to keep that that um, regionalism. It's yeah. not going to work unless we do it. I'm a firm believer in that. Yeah. Um, and, and don't get me wrong. We all have um, uh, different leadership, different councils, different different uh, mayors, different everything. But at the end of the day. 
businesses do not see lines. You know, mm -hmm. I, 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 I joke with people all the time. If somebody can tell me where the line is out in Churchland that separates Suffolk, Chesapeake, and Portsmouth, <laughs> I give them 50 bucks. Uh -huh. um, uh, I don't know where that is, yeah. but it's out there. Yeah. But the businesses don't see that. So when, when we're out here telling our message, oh, we're gonna, certainly we're going to big up Portsmouth. Um, but Hampton Roads is, 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 is where we are. So beyond the, the obvious, because this is one thing that, that I've, I've been reaching out to some people about recently is there's a lot of obvious things about COVID-19 right now that we're dealing with. I mean, the, the distancing, the, the, um, the fact that we're doing video instead of in person and a lot, but beyond the obvious, and I'm interested to hear from both of you is, what have you seen as been the biggest challenge you've faced beyond just some of the obvious things like we've got a social distance, we can't physically be there? I mean, is has there been anything that really kind of surprised you that you totally didn't expect when all this started that's kind of you've had to really work through? It's hard to pick just one thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble for my answer. <laughs> I'm going to let him go first. I'm going to let him right. go first. <laughs> um, I think, you know, the, the speed at which this happened, Yeah, I think, um, for a lot of folks, you know, we're not prepared for this, yeah. um, the transition that was necessary, um, and the speed at which it had to, uh, you know, occur to maintain business, I think, um, is probably what was most surprising, um, to me, I think to, you know, a lot of folks, um, and it's that's been a challenge. I think we you know we've we've worked through that. We're still working through it mm -hmm. to adjust the way we do things. But I think it's it really important to be able to uh, be prepared to do that pivot um, at a moment's notice um, mm -hmm. when something like this happens. I don't think anybody could have predicted this happening and happening as quickly as it did. I mean, it was literally as if somebody flipped a switch. Um, I think we were on the road traveling um, when we first kind of got word that. Um, you know, there were stay-at-home orders going into effect. Um, they were, you know, limiting travel. Um, it it happened almost, you know, overnight. Uh, so I think that was probably um, what was the greatest challenge. Um, and we've kind of had a, a bit of a, I don't want to say a struggle, but it's been, a, you know, difficult for everybody, I think, to adjust to that. Mm. Um, but I think we've managed. I think going forward, we're going to be prepared for something like this to happen. Yeah. Um, I think that's really kind of a takeaway that I've had. Yeah, Robert has something good, so I'm. I'm, I mean, I'm like I said, I'm gonna, gonna gonna I'm, I'm gonna get in trouble for mine. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I, I, for for me, what I think has caught everyone off guard, I know myself, is now learning and understanding the value of three things: uh, space time and self yeah. because um i i just realized uh who my family was <laughs> because you spend every waking moment with someone <laughs> that will that will make you learn some things yeah. about them and yourself mm. um and, and, and how you need your own space yeah. and how at the same time you need to be able to share your space. Yeah. Um, and, at the, and, and you need to know yourself and be willing to share yourself. For me, that is how I get through the day. I've got to understand, again, the, the two questions, could I and should I, you know? <laughs> I, I, long day at work, a long day on conference call after conference call after conference call. Yeah. Could I go and do something else by myself? Should I do something else? But should I do something with my family? Yeah. Yep. They've already photo bombed, serial bombed, Lego bombed the Zoom calls and everything else. But what should I be doing? But at the same time, you got to be able to measure and say, I do still need that time to myself yeah um so uh if my wife sees this i'm sorry but um at the same time you grow closer staff yeah. is the same way yeah. um 
I spent more time face to face with these folks. Uh, even though I see them every day. Yeah. But to have conference calls back to back and say we only need, we started off with two conference calls a day, video calls. And it was like nine o'clock and three o'clock. And you're like, okay, I, we can answer everything on those two calls. But then we get done with the, the nine o'clock call at 10 o'clock. But I'm talking to Don here again at 1030. And then, and then I'm talking to Jessica at 11. And yeah. But it's like, you, you start spending that time, but you got to find a way to balance. We always talk about, you know, work life balance. Yeah. They're one in the same now. Mm -hmm. Work and life, they're, that, that, that's it. They're joined at the hip. Yeah. I, I think in the last three months, I have taught school, made breakfast, learned, been a chef, boy RD kind of thing, um, and been an economic developer and a referee and everything, all at, at the same time. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and shout out to every teacher I'm sorry, <laughs> um, but that's just, those are the things that when you look at it, you're like, man. So again, but I'm hoping that, and that this is something that I personally will make sure I'm working on. I got to remember that when we come out of this, yes. you know, when we come out of and get back to the new normal, yeah. remember what we've built during this time. And what we have built again is that a base and a baseline for ourselves and our relationships mm -hmm. and, and and for how we want to conduct business going forward. And again, that's personal business as well as business business. Yeah. We are going forward as a state and yeah, some spots are hot, some spots are a little warm, some are cold, but we're still a state with a commonwealth. Yeah. Um, I was thinking what I'm really supposed to say. And we're going to make it. Mm -hmm. And that, and that's, that's the, that's the, the thing I think that at the end of the day, everyone should focus on. Mm -hmm. We're going to come to the other side of this. Yeah. Businesses, um, some businesses will, will, will succeed. Um, others will need to change. Some just may not because the business model is just that different. Yeah. Um, however, this gives you the opportunity to really evaluate what can I do differently? What do I know about myself and my business that I can now pivot to a different direction? Mm -hmm. um, no one failed during this pandemic from a standpoint of a business. It, it's not anything that you could foresee and foreshadow. However, if nothing else, you learn to be resilient. And, and, and our office is here to help uh, put things back together. Um, our office is here to kind of shape how the, the future of Portsmouth will look along with our uh, mayors and vice mayor, city manager, and, 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 the, and the management team to make this come back together and put the pieces back together. Mm -hmm. um, one of the last things I'll say is that it's just the largest thank you I can give because um, without yourself, our colleagues, um, the men and women that are out every day helping the sick, helping the businesses like Jim Carroll and so forth. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have anything to talk about. You know, we, we would be here uh, again, trying to do some of the same things the same way and so on and so forth. They're resilient. We're resilient. Um, and again, for us, uh, my message to everyone is just, you know, thanks. We're here. Um, and what more can we do?